forward and chapter one of the friendship of christ this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the friendship of christ by robert hugh benson forward this is my friend from an old manuscript let me tell you how i made his acquaintance i had heard much of him but took no heed he sent daily gifts and presents but i never thanked him he often seemed to want my friendship but i remained cold i was homeless and wretched and starving and in peril every hour and he offered me shelter and comfort and food and safety but i was ungrateful still at last he crossed my path and with tears in his eyes he besought me saying come and abide with me let me tell you how he treats me now he supplies all my wants he gives me more than i dare ask he anticipates my every need he begs me to ask for more he never reminds me of my past ingratitude he never rebukes me for my past follies let me tell you further what i think of him he is as good as he is great his love is as ardent as it is true he is as lavish of his promises as he is faithful in keeping them he is as jealous of my love as he is deserving of it i am in all things his debtor but he bids me call him friend part one christ in the interior soul chapter one the friendship of christ general it is not good for man to be alone genesis chapter two verse eighteen the emotion of friendship is among the most mighty and the most mysterious of human instincts materialistic philosophers delight in tracing even the most exalted emotions art religion romance to purely carnal sources to the instincts of the propagation or sustenation of physical life and yet in this single experience at any rate when we class together as we can all those varied relationships between men and men women and women as well as between men and women under the common title of friendship materialistic philosophy wholly breaks down it is not a manifestation of sex for david can cry to jonathan thy love to me was wonderful passing the love of women it is not a sympathy arising from common interests for the sage and the fool can form a friendship at least as strong as any between two sages or two fools it is not a relationship based on the exchange of ideas for the deepest friendships thrive better in silence than in speech no man is truly my friend says maeterlinck until we have each learned to be silent in one another's company and this mysterious thing is as mighty as it is mysterious it is bound to rise so far as it is true to the laws of its own development to a pitch of passion far beyond that of ordinary relations between the sexes since it is independent of those physical elements necessary to a love between husband and wife it can rise mysteriously higher in certain respects than the plane which those elements sustain it seeks to win nothing to produce nothing but to sacrifice all even where the supernatural motive is apparently absent it can reflect on the natural plane even more clearly than does sacramental wedded love the characteristics of divine charity on its own plane 
it also beareth all things believeth all things hopeth all things seeketh not her own is not puffed up one corinthians chapter thirteen it is the salt of perfect matrimony but it can exist without sex it takes its place with those other supreme departments of human experience art chivalry and even religion and it is not the least noble of the company on the other hand there is hardly any experience more subject to disillusionment it deifies beasts and is disappointed to find them human after all when my friend fails me at a crisis or when i fail my friend there is hardly any bitterness in life so bitter and again while friendship itself has an air of eternity about it seeming to transcend all natural limits there is hardly any emotion so utterly at the mercy of time we form friendships and grow out of them it might almost be said that we cannot retain the faculty of friendship unless we are continually making new friends just as in religion in proportion as we form inadequate images and ideas of the divine which for the time we adore and presently change for others we progress in the knowledge of the true god i cannot retain true childhood unless i am continually putting away childish things here then is one of the more princely passions which while feeding upon earthly things are continuously dissatisfied with them which themselves white hot are never consumed one of the passions that make history and therefore look always to the future and not to the past a passion which perhaps above all others since in its instance it is impossible to resolve it into earthly elements points to eternity only for the place of its satisfaction and to the divine love for the answering of its human needs there is but one intelligible explanation then for the desires which it generates yet never fulfils there is but one supreme friendship to which all human friendships point one ideal friend in whom we find perfect and complete that for which we look in type and shadow in the faces of our human lovers number one it is at once the privilege and the burden of catholics that they know so much of jesus christ it is their privilege since an intelligent knowledge of the person and the attributes and the achievements of incarnate god is an infinitely greater wisdom than all the rest of the sciences put together to have a knowledge of the creator is incalculably a more noble thing than to have a knowledge of his creation yet it is a burden as well for the splendor of this knowledge may be so great as to blind us to the value of its details the blaze of the divinity to him who sees it may be so bright as to bewilder him with regard to the humanity the unity of the wood vanishes in the perfection of the trees catholics then above all others are prone through their very knowledge of the mysteries of faith through their very apprehension of jesus christ as their god their high priest their victim their prophet and their king to forget that his delights are to be with the sons of men more than to rule the seraphim that while his majesty held him on the throne of his father his love brought him down on pilgrimage that he might transform his servants into his friends for example devout souls often complain of their loneliness on earth 
they pray they frequent the sacraments they do their utmost to fulfil the christian precepts and when all is done they find themselves solitary there could scarcely be a more evident proof of their failure to understand one at least of the great motives of the incarnation they adore christ as god they feed on him in communion cleanse themselves in his precious blood look to the time when they shall see him as their judge yet of that intimate knowledge of and companionship with him in which the divine friendship consists they have experienced little or nothing they long they say for one who can stand by their side and upon their own level who can not merely remove suffering but can himself suffer with them one to whom they can express in silence the thoughts which no speech can utter and they seem not to understand that this is the very post which jesus christ himself desires to win that the supreme longing of his sacred heart is that he should be admitted not merely to the throne of the heart or to the tribunal of conscience but to that inner secret chamber of the soul where a man is most himself and therefore most utterly alone see how full are the gospels of this desire of jesus christ there were indeed splendid moments when the god within the humanity blazed out in glory moments when the very garments that he wore burned radiant in his divinity there were moments of divine energy when blind eyes opened through creative to created light when ears deaf to earthly noises heard the divine voice when the dead burst their graves to look on him who had first given and then restored their life and there were august and terrible moments when god went apart with god into the wilderness or the garden when god cried through the lips of desolated humanity why hast thou forsaken me but for the most part it is of his humanity that the gospels tell us a humanity that cried to its kind a humanity not only tempted but also as it were specialized in all points like as we are now jesus loved martha and her sister mary and lazarus john chapter eleven verse five jesus looked upon him loved him mark chapter one verse twenty one loved him it seems with an emotion distinguished from that of the divine love that loves all things that it has made loved him for the ideal which he in particular might yet accomplish more than for the fact that he merely existed as did others of his kind loved him as i love my own friend and as he loves me it is these moments probably above all others that have endeared jesus christ to humanity moments in which he displayed himself as truly one of us it is when he is lifted up not in the glory of triumphant divinity but in the shame of beaten humanity that he draws us to himself we read of his works of power and are conscious of awe and adoration but when we read how he sat weary at the well-side while his friends went for food how in the garden he turned to agonized reproach to those from whom he had hoped for consolation what could you not watch one hour with me matthew chapter twenty six verse forty one when he turned once more and for the last time used the sacred name to him who had forfeited it for ever friend whereto art thou come we are conscious of that which is even dearer to him 
than all the adoration of all the angels in glory tenderness and love and compassion emotions to which friendship alone has a right or again jesus christ speaks to us more than once in the scripture not merely in hint and implication but in deliberate statement of this desire of his to be our friend he sketches for us a little picture of the lonely house at nightfall of himself who stands and knocks upon the door and of the intimate little meal he expects and if any man will open any man i will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me or again he tells those whose hearts are sick at the bereavement that comes upon them so swiftly i will not now call you servants but i have called you friends john chapter fifteen verse fifteen or again he promises his continual presence in spite of appearances to those who have learned his desires where two or three are gathered in my name there am i in the midst matthew chapter eighteen verse twenty behold i am with you all days matthew chapter twenty eight verse twenty and as long as you did it to one of these my least brethren you did it to me matthew chapter twenty five verse forty if then there is anything clear in the gospels it is this that jesus christ first and foremost desires our friendship it is his reproach to the world not that the saviour came to the lost and that the lost ran from him to lose themselves more deeply not that the creator came to the creature and that the creature rejected him but that the friend came unto his own and that his own received him not john chapter one verse eleven now the consciousness of this friendship of jesus christ is the very secret of the saints ordinary men can live ordinary lives with little or no open defiance of god from a hundred second-rate motives we keep the commandments that we may enter into life we avoid sin that we may escape hell we fight against worldliness that we may keep the respect of the world but no man can advance three paces on the road of perfection unless jesus christ walks beside him it is this then that gives distinction to the way of the saint and that gives him his apparent grotesqueness too for what is more grotesque in the eyes of the unimaginative world than the ecstasy of the lover common sense never yet drove a man mad it is common sense that is thought to characterize sanity and common sense therefore has never scaled mountains much less has it cast them into the sea but it is the maddening joy of the conscious companionship of jesus christ that has produced the lovers and therefore the giants of history it is the developing friendship of jesus christ and the passion that has inspired those lives which the world in its duller moods calls unnatural and the church in all her moods supernatural this priest cried saint teresa in one of her more confidential moments with her lord this priest is a very proper person to be made a friend of ours number two now it must be remembered that while this friendship between christ and the soul is from one point of view perfectly comparable to friendship between man and man from another point of view it is incomparable certainly it is a friendship between his soul and ours but that soul of his is united to divinity a single individualistic friendship with him therefore 
does not exhaust his capacities he is man but he is not merely a man he is the son rather than a son of man he is the eternal word by whom all things were made and are sustained he approaches us therefore along countless avenues although it is the same figure that advances down each it is not enough to know him interiorly only he must be known if his relation with us is to be that which he desires in all those activities and manifestations in which he displays himself one who knows him therefore solely as an interior companion and guide however dear and adorable but does not know him in the blessed sacrament one whose heart burns as he walks with jesus in the way but whose eyes are held that he knows him not in the breaking of bread knows but one perfection out of ten thousand and again he who calls him friend in communion but whose devotion is so narrow and restricted that he does not recognize him in that mystical body in which he dwells and speaks on earth one in fact who is a devotee an individualist and does not therefore understand that corporate religion which is the very essence of catholicism or again who knows him in all these ways yet does not know him in his vicar or in his priest or in his mother or again who knows him in all these ways who is in popular language an admirable catholic but who does not recognize the right of the sinner to ask for mercy or the beggar for alms in his name or again who recognizes him under sensational circumstances but not under dreary ones who gives lavishly to the first beggar who pleads in christ's name in the street but fails to find him in the unappealing dullard those in short who recognize christ in one or two or three or more aspects but not in all not at least in all those of which christ himself has explicitly spoken can never rise to that height of intimacy and knowledge of that ideal friend which he himself desires and has declared to be within our power to attain let us then consider the friendship of christ under some of these aspects truly we cannot live without him for he is the life it is impossible to come to the father except by him who is the way it is useless to toil in pursuit of truth unless we first possess it even the most sacred experiences of life are barren unless his friendship sanctifies them the holiest love is obscure except it burns in his shadow the purest affection that affection that unites my dearest friend to myself is a counterfeit and a usurper unless i love my friend in christ unless he the ideal and absolute friend is the personal bond that unites us End of Part 1, Chapter 1